Hello, everyone. My name is Megan Glenn, and I am the National Senior Director of Programs at the American Liver Foundation. I am here today with Dr. Carolyn Jahorian, gastroenterologist at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center in Boston and member of ALS Medical Advisory Committee. I will be asking Dr. Johorian your most frequently asked questions about alpha-1 antitrypsin or AATD. I would like to thank Vertex Pharmaceuticals for sponsoring this video. Okay, and can alpha-1 cause a fatty liver? Yes, so there's fatty liver and then there's non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, uh, which is a skewed way of looking at things. But fatty liver is really a discussion of sequelae of liver disease. So in, in terms of developing cirrhosis, you initially have fatty liver, which can be caused by non-alcoholic fatty liver uh, along with other diseases such as AATD. And then down the road, as you get inflammation and then subsequent scarring development of cirrhosis. Um, so yes, the answer is alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency can cause fatty liver, um, which is typically reversible if we can stop the damage to, if we can stop any sort of damage to the liver. Um, but we also have to take in consideration that you can have alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency along with other uh, liver issues. Um, so it's important for you to also undergo other uh, studies to make sure that there's not underlying hep viral hepatitis or even other autoimmune conditions. Probability is not high, but it's not zero. And then at the same time, also, um, making enough dietary and or lifestyle to, uh, changes to, to prevent any further damage to your liver. Okay, and if someone has the S variant gene that you mentioned earlier, how much could AATD affect them? So most SS gene carriers are pretty asymptomatic. There's a few less than, I would say less than 10% that are really symptomatic. But I have a few patients who are carriers or who have the, both S alleles and their liver tests are fine. And I have sent them to a pulmonologist just to make sure that there's no underlying uh, lung issue. And most of them are completely asymptomatic. What other health problems can AATD cause? So apart from the lung and liver issues, uh, I think I briefly kind of touched base with this, but you can have inflammation of your soft tissue. So paniculitis is the term we use. And so we can see that in patients. Um, you can have blood, blood, ves blood vessel issues, so vasculitis. Um, you can also have um, vascular abnormalities such as an aneurysm in your brain. Um, skin manifestations such as psoriasis, and there has been an association with what we call IgA nephropathy, which can cause kidney issues. Okay, and then for someone newly diagnosed with AATD, what would be their next steps? I think the next step is to make an appointment with a pulmonologist and a hepatologist or a gastroenterologist who's comfortable with alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency um, and getting your liver function test, getting liver imaging, seeing a pulmonologist and getting pulmonary function tests um, and kind of having a baseline so that we can monitor for signs of advancing disease. Because at this point, you know, we, we're currently just following patients rather than initiating any sort of infusion of alpha-1 antitrypsin. And is someone that has AATD more likely to have pneumonia and other breathing issues? Yes. Um, so unfortunately, what ends up happening with patients who have scarring of their lungs is that the ability to clear, you know, bacteria and phlegm uh, is limited and so more likely to get pneumonias, um, which then kind of causes a cascade of events in that it causes an inflammatory, infl infl inf uh, inflammatory reaction in your lungs, um, which then can cause more scarring in the, in the lungs and limiting your capacity to properly breathe. Thank you so much. Is, lastly, is there anything else that you would like people to know about AATD? I think that it's something that, you know, I, I hopefully, uh, I hope the prevalence and incidence don't go up, but I think it's something that as physicians, we need to be more cognizant of, but also um, just bringing more attention to it as a disease on the on a whole, um, just because I think it is underdiagnosed. But what's interesting is the research that's going into looking at these patients, but I think our research could further be advanced if we have a greater um patient population to study. Well, thank you so much for your time, Dr. Johorian, and thank you again to Vertex Pharmaceuticals for sponsoring this video. Thank you.